While Bryce was editing the last video, I made some very important changes to this, and I need to get you caught up. To fix the wobble that the frame still had, I made these heavy aluminum angled pieces that bolt and stiffen up the connection points on the frame, and now the wobble is gone. I installed the drive motor, which is a NEMA 23 stepper, and it's the biggest, most powerful NEMA 23 available. Figure it's better to be safe than sorry and not have to rip this apart later to replace the motor if I burn it up. And the drive system is complete and installed also. It consists of four ball bearings, two of which keep the belt in tension over the pulley on the stepper motor, and the other two keep it interfaced with the cylinder that has a belt that's facing outwards also so that the teeth mesh. When I got this installed, it caused another issue. All of the guide wheels on this have squishy rubber on them. So when I installed these metal ball bearings that do not squish, it changed the attitude of the cylinder, the way it sat in the frame. So I had to retune the location of all the wheels to make sure that it lined up again. And in doing that, I realized I needed to change the tension on the cables. So as I tuned the cables, I realized that this handle was going much too far past center, so I tuned the stop location. Which means now I can do this and unlock and open it just like Master Chief does in the game. The frame is stiff enough now and all of this is tuned to work together the way that it was supposed to. I am absolutely itching to test this thing, but I'm almost there. I need the electronics, but first I need to do some finishing work to the frame so that I can permanently install the electronics. And to do that, I need to remove the PVC boards from the frame, and then I'm gonna set up a little router table that I recently inherited so that I can get quick, even roundovers on the edges to make it more accurately match the model in the game. Got a little carried away after I finished using the router and I went ahead and attached the shoulder pad onto this part and I primed it. And the reason I did it in that order was because I wanted the shoulder pad to be adhered directly to the plastic. That way I didn't have to worry about it potentially releasing because it was glued onto paint. I primed it with universal bonding primer because it's an adhesion promoter that works really well. And then I did flat black over the top of it because that makes it significantly easier to see any flaws in my sanding slash routing job. I also made this box, which goes right here. And this is important because I didn't have enough space inside for the electronics. And this makes it more accurate to the game model, but it also gives me a lot more space to put that stuff in. So step one, attach the box. Step two, fill the box with electronics. I could have set up this electronic system like I have on previous projects where it relies more on physical control for me to make the launcher do the stuff that I want it to do, but it wouldn't be as consistent. And if I have it be computer controlled, I can have it do everything that it does in the game accurately and consistently. So I set up an electronic system with all the components and the wiring, but then it came to the coding and I'm not very good at that. Luckily, I have a really good friend that is brilliant at coding. So he wrote the code for the system and now this will be able to do everything that it does in the game, but that doesn't mean it's not going to go without a little bit of testing first. First step is to plug it in and see if anything catches on fire when I turn it on. This is the master switch. It enables power to the stepper driver and to the USB thing, and that puts out five volts for the rest of the electronics to turn on. So when I turn this switch on, nothing should move or do anything, but I should at least see lights on that stuff to make sure I have power to those things. Here goes nothing. We have power. Nothing's catching on fire, nothing is getting hot, everything works. That light turned on, which it should. Microcontroller came on, and my voltage changer to take it down to five volts is on. Now, it's time to load up some code and start doing some testing. 
So we got the code loaded up onto the microcontroller, but we couldn't get any data going to the computer. It wasn't recognizing it. So after a whole bunch of messing around, we found out that our charge sync cable was not actually a charge sync cable, so it wasn't transferring any data. Looked around for a long time, found one that actually was, and now we're good to go. I have three tests that I got to run in order to get everything set up for how fast the stepper is supposed to move the cylinder set here. But first I want to test it and just make sure that it turns the stepper motor and everything's going to be okay. So now when I press this, it should move very slowly. <laughs> well, this is hysterically slow. I'm gonna need to ramp it up. So the trigger is set up to increase my RPMs, maximum RPM limit. So every time I click, it goes up by 10. Since that was so outrageously slow, we're gonna go up to 60 instead of 10. My self-test button is set up to be an acceleration rate increase. It boosts acceleration by 100 every time I press it. With those increased to 60 and 400 respectively, we'll try it again. Looks good. We're gonna reset it to slow. We're gonna put the cylinder in and we're gonna start bumping it up little by little. Back to ultra slow. Here we go to actually move the cylinder. Let's see if this works. It spins. <laughs> We're gonna go 50 RPM so that it's not so painful to watch it try to move. And acceleration 500 because 400 wasn't that fast. That's very slow. All right, that's annoying. We're gonna go faster. Well, now we're at 70. Try again. That was pretty cool. <laughs> but that acceleration is terrible. So now we're at 1200 acceleration. This is gonna be a little quicker. Nineteen. Two thousand. Woo! May have found max acceleration there. <laughs> I think something may have moved a little bit and it got caught on the frame possibly. Okay, did a little more tuning. Had a little bug in the code, but now I think things are working. We're getting it dialed in. So this is 3000 acceleration and 30 RPM. She's starting to sound pretty good. Let's try to bump the RPM one time. Oh, I took a double bump. So now we're gonna try it at 50. Yeah, a little much, a little much. I think that might be a little over our max speed. <laughs> It just needs the tiniest bit more engagement and then it won't and sound like it's tearing itself apart. Several days later. I don't know how long I've been out here in the garage. I do know I'm wearing the same shirt and I think I've gotten this to work. Initially, there was a tiny bit of code that was wrong that wasn't allowing this to spin at the RPMs that was written into the code. That wasn't a big deal to fix, but we want it to spin at 60 RPMs. The issue was that we started cogging with the stepper once we hit 30 RPMs, which means it jerks back and forth instead of stepping forward. We want 60 ripums on this instead of 30 because that gives us a half second turn, which means we can fire the rockets at the same rate that you do in the game. At that point, I had the limit switches wired, but they weren't installed on the frame, and that caused another major problem. I knew stepper motors caused electromagnetic interference, but I didn't know how much. It was inducing so much into the wires that it was making the microcontroller freak out, and it was thinking that the lid was going back and forth the whole time, and it uncovered another, another problem because it showed us that the code thought that whenever the lid was open, it needed to run backwards, nonstop, forever. But that was an easy fix. The limit switch wire problem, on the other hand, was not. I tried all sorts of different shielding methods to keep the EMI from going into the wires. Aluminum foil, steel wool, combinations of the two, different routings on the frame, but nothing worked. The only way that I could get it to stop was to move the wire as far away from the frame as possible. So I rough cut and installed the panels that are gonna be on here anyway, and then taped the wire in place. That way it would stop freaking out and think the lid was flapping open and closed. But that fix still wasn't spinning fast enough. And I thought that it was probably because I was using rubber grommets as tires on the bearings for where this thing was rolling. But that was causing a lot of resistance. It was really difficult to turn the tubes. So I 3D printed little plastic rings that I could put O-rings on. That way it would turn smooth and with far less resistance. We could hear there was contact being made so we started checking for clearance issues which meant we had to check every place on both sides where every roller was or every 
spot where it got near the frame to see if it was touching something, especially on the drive system. And we found a few tiny interference issues at multiple points where it was just barely catching. And we thought that might be what was keeping us from making it spin faster. But there was also another problem. I had to reset some of the bearing mounts on the drive system to make sure the belt stayed aligned because there was a lot of resistance happening here also. All that made this spin far easier than it did before, which means we can finally test to see how fast we can actually make this go. Monitoring the microcontroller with the laptop, power up the system, 20 RPM. Beautiful, let's bump it up. 30 RPM. It's so good. <laughs> 40 RPM. Perfect. We're at 6,000 acceleration on this, by the way. 50 RPM. Like a dream. 60. <laughs> That's what we need. We need 60. It worked beautifully. Let's see if we can do 70. Just because we don't actually need to do 70 ever, but. <laughs> She's flying now. Oh, would you look at that? Let's go for 80. <laughs> it spins so fast. Oh, this is so great. 90? Should we keep going? Let's just keep going. Oh, okay. We're not doing 90. We'll just, all we need is 60 and we hit it. She's finally working. We don't need to go any faster, but I do have stronger batteries and I'm dying to see if I can make this thing actually spin that fast. So eight cells running the system instead of six. This can handle up to 42 volts. Even with the bigger batteries, we're only at 33.6. 90 rip'ems. <laughs> Going for a hundred. Oh, okay. <laughs> it seemed like it really wanted to do it, but that's really fast. 100, that's the limit. 60 RPMs, exactly what we need. With the higher cell count batteries, we're good to go for the next two tests. Last time I asked you about the rocket design, whether you wanted me to use the game accurate one or something else. And I'm gonna do exactly what the majority of you said, where I try to get this to work, and if it's too much of a pain in the butt, then I'm gonna make my own rocket that's actually gonna work, and I know it will. This time, I need to know what you want me to shoot with the rockets. If you have any ideas for stuff that I can shoot with this, I'd love to know. Other than that, I gotta do two more tests to figure out how many steps past the limit switches so that it indexes correctly and I can do all the animation stuff and the finishing work. So until then, I'll see you next time. You can't tell me that this is not awesome. It's almost, I mean, you're watching a real life spanker with spinning coming to life. I mean, this is something I've thought about since I was a kid. Ah, it's so fast. This is so awesome.